Hi, I'm in some kind of a funk, and I wanted to talk about how things that I liked are not acceptable anymore. So, in terms of pop culture junk, that was always junk, now that I can see that there won't be any more of the kind of thing that I like, of any of the flavors of sitcoms or bedroom farces that I like. I wanted to talk about those things, because I'm like, well, it's dead. So I'm going to talk about Three's Company. This is a very destructive sitcom. It went into syndication and they put it on as soon as kids came home from school. Yet when it was on the air, it was a bedroom farce for adults. And most kids weren't allowed to see Three's Company because it was always about sex. Every, everything. Every episode, there was Jack, Janet, and Chrissy and they had three different lovers every week. And Jack had to pretend that he was gay because they would not in 19, late 1970s into the 80s not allow a man, a single man, to live together with two girls. Like, that's how different the world has become. Think about that now. Now that it's just roommates and the guy doesn't even want to, he knows those girls and they're gross and he doesn't want to sleep with any of them. I live with them. I don't want to, you know what I mean? That's the reality of Three's Company now. Not for everyone. But that is, the, you know what I mean? Like, now there's co-ed living and nobody, they don't want to bang each other because they live together and they're gross. Whatever, or they're, whatever, or they're, whatever it is, they just don't like them. Sociopaths. They're really clean though, they're neat. They never touch my stuff. I think he's killing girls in there. But you know what? Like, he's a fantastic roommate. And he does all this really charming stuff. Always has a lighter. I just don't. Br I just can't bring any dates back to the apartment because he's probably gonna chop them up. I hope he's not setting me up to blame me for it. So anyway, three's co that's a different sitcom. Sitcom. So I. So I. So I live with American Psycho. Whatever. Um. <clears throat> Roomies with American Psycho, Roomies Edition, CSI, whatever. So anyway, Three's Company, it's a bedroom farce. This, this is the sitcom that has literally has men chasing women around a table like every third episode. Where lecherous old men just literally like, man, they were like chasing them with their tongues out and their hands grabbing at boobies. So it's very deceptive. Uh, it's, it might seem quaint now because how disgusting stuff is because in the 1990s there was Kevin Smith and something about Mary and then the idea of comedy was just to be like oh man that, that'll make him puke that's funny and then at the end make his have a, his balls get torn off and then the blood comes goes on gets all over his parents yeah, it's humiliating that's the joke That's the 90s. So I mean, before that, one of the things that broke down barriers was Three's Company. Because it really kind of is a dirty show. They play strip poker. They do all these lewd things. It's always, it's always about sex and sneaking around. And everybody's, it's implied that they have lovers. And they live in California. And Jack's always trying to sleep. John Ritter's always trying to sleep with, well, any of them. There's a horny old lady. There's a horny old man. That's Mr. Furley. The Ropers are gone. It doesn't matter. The point is that it was an adult bedroom farce. And I heard kids talking about it. This is like probably in the 1980s into the 90s. But I remember one time, I was like, why are they talking about Three's Company? It looked like elementary kids. I don't know how old people are. And I was like, well, Three's Company is on like as soon as the kids come home from school. They did it on purpose. Kids aren't even supposed to watch it, so they put it in syndication. And then the kids come home from school. And then Three's Company's on. Right there with Gilligan's Island and Happy... This would have been the 80s. The 80s syndication of television would have been Happy Days, Gilligan's Island, Three's Company, The Jeffersons. That's acceptable, actually. What's happening? That's the one I liked. I liked what's happening. Um, I didn't have money either, so I wasn't black, though, and I couldn't do hip-hop dances or anything. 
but they had neat houses. I always thought that the house from from um, what's happening it looks kind of like the same house from Sanford and Son, but I don't think that it is. It had those steps, high ceilings. So anyway, that was syndication too in the 80s, good times, all this stuff. So all the shows that were on in the 70s were in syndication. And Three's Company was a big hit. It made them all stars. It was this sexy slapstick. Because Suzanne Summers would, you know, like slip on banana peels and Joyce DeWitt was getting goosed in the ass with a plunger and then she'd fall into the kitchen and come out with pie on her face. They were all doing it. They're all goofing around. Even the ropers would have like a black eye, get a black eye from a greasy pipe or whatever. So it was a, a bedroom farce slapstick. Um, and I think it went on for like seven or eight seasons because this is, this is seasons three and four because I have the old uh, every episode ever. And I know maybe more about Three's Company than the average person because it was part of my programming going to sleep. I had a girlfriend and she wanted to go to sleep of six hour VHS tape she made where she cut the commercials out, saved the bumpers if they were about Three's Company. So every night for years was long term relate was serious relationship. So we go to bed to three hour VHS tapes on auto repeat. Sorry, six hour VHS tapes on auto repeat of Three's Company episodes. And that show was on for years and in syndication, which is how she transferred them all to VHS from the recording them and I would go to sleep to it so I know all about this show and Suzanne Summers replacements this show was such a hit there was a bedroom farce for adults but I remember they had a Suzanne Summers doll and if you look on eBay you look up Suzanne Summers doll or Three's Company doll you will see that it is a eerie creepily uncanny valley semblance of Suzanne Summers, like in a disco dress or something. And it looks like a prop from a movie where Suzanne Summers plays a woman who gets stalked by a doll that looks like Suzanne Summers, that looks like her. It looks like a creepy prop from a movie, but no, they actually made that doll. I guess for little girls to play with, but I know through his company, they shouldn't be watching it. It's not, this kid shouldn't be watching it even still today. Everything is a joke. Like Beavis and Butthead, didn't even know who they are. In the 1990s, Beavis and Butthead were these cartoon characters. And anytime someone said butt or let's go do it, they were like doing it. It means sex. So Beavis and Butthead were these two guys in the 1990s that was like the audience of MTV or whatever. And anytime any, anybody said that's what she said, then they'd go ho 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 because they thought it meant sex. That's Three's Company. Three's Company is, oh, I think everything means sex. And then everybody's really horny. And everybody gets laid. And it's supposed to be California. They probably really were though. They probably, they probably was everybody. Probably even Mr. Furley. They're probably all getting action. All these people. Suzanne Summers probably at orgies with her husbands on a leash. It's probably pretty gross in reality. And Coke binges. So it probably was a dirty show, but it also was a fun show. And um, it's like, it's, it's in my brain. It's I've got this McCultured into my brain because I was like, you know, sex and then programming. It's like here, you know, you know what I mean. And then going to bed is through his company. <clears throat> so I think it had a, a huge effect on shaping the sensibilities to kind of horn everybody up and to make a fake idea of the world that that was also promoted in 1980s movies these going to get laid movies which i then suppose culminated with the american pie series and then when all those guys said we don't want to do any more american pie reunions it just became national lampoons presents american pie horny acres and it's like just a summer camp where people bang or something I guess I don't know it's starring Eugene Levy because he was the pie guy in the first month remember that 
he ate the pie after he, his son ruined the pie for everyone. He ate it and he's like, this pie tastes funny. Ah, whatever. Um, so, so there's a lot of stuff like this that I like. You're not allowed to do this anymore. But it's also bad for you. Like, it's, you're not supposed to be, like, basically, you know, like, Joyce DeWitt's on all fours and roller skates. That's terrible. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's a blonde and a brunette. And then uh, Tex Ritter's kid, and he's just, like, dropping vases and breaking everything and falling all over the place. Doing it better than he was more funny at all that stuff than Chevy Chase. Chevy Chase couldn't even smile or have a personality when he was making a fool out of himself. John Ritter was all personality. Didn't his father, Tex Ritter, is the one that has that famous quote? And he says, I never met a man I didn't bite. Isn't that that's Tex Ritter, right? He's a cowboy. It's hard out there in the desert. Like the bone tomahawk. <laughs> But one of the other uh, bedroom farces that I always loved from the 1980s, and this is like early 1980s, Corey Feldman was in this. It was called Madam's Place, and it was starring Judy Landers. And she played the best born sexy yesterday that probably has ever been done. And she just plays as dumb as a wall, but you can tell that she's not stupid. So it's even hotter. But that's not what this is about. It's about a gay man's wish fulfillment. I don't have physical media for Madam's Place because they don't ever think it's been put on DVDs. Unless like Shout Factory or Mill Creek for whatever reason decides to put it on DVD just because they want to have it. I mean, I don't know, I just feel like the DVD sections are smaller and smaller and smaller and they're non-existent. So wiping out physical media. So anyway, Madam's Place, it's a gay man's wish fulfillment. Madam's Flowers. I don't know how much of a hit the show was, but there's like 50 or so episodes. So how many seasons is that? But I think the problem was that, that William Flowers died. And he had a puppet called Madam. He had the impeccable voice of an old lady. So he basically did like a puppet drag queen version of himself. And he used his drag voice because he was an excellent puppeteer with his hand. And his wish fulfillment was playing an old lady like Joan Crawford or um, Catherine Hepburn. Madam looks kind of like Catherine Hepburn. It's a, it's a guy's hand. It's a gay man's hand. You don't you want to know where I've been? That'd be one of his jokes. So he was a dirty club comedian and he did puppets. He did dirty puppets. This is William Flowers. So then for whatever reason, maybe because of his lover or the gay mafia in the 80s or something, he got Madam's Place. And it was a dirty show. So if I'm not mistaken, it was always on late. It was always on like 9 o'clock or after and on like a Saturday. Because the show's pretty, it's maybe to do, it's like, it's dirtier than Three's Company. And some of the stuff they say is pretty, like, I was like, wow, this, I, I liked the show, but I didn't remember what they, what I liked about it. But what I liked about the show was that I said it was a gay man's wish fulfillment. So he used the show as a platform to do anything he wanted. He had a friend who was trying to be famous, throw him in there. He had part of it was a variety show where he did the puppet as a variety show. Part of it was her fabulous lifestyle, like a reality show, which just mad him living her lifestyle. And look at all the perilous things that happened from having it all. And you know, it's a, again, gay man's wish fulfillment, just to hammer the point home. So, Madam's always chasing around and courting like hot dudes and stuff like that. Because it's just a dude's hand. But it's not. It's a Madam puppet. And the puppet's convincing. It just sounds like an old lady. But it's just that, that guy's voice. And, and then Judy Landers is always... She never, I don't think she ever wears pants. It's terrible. Um, and then there's like... You know, like every oh, you know, what I mean? it's like where's Poochie? Oh, everybody, where everybody loves Madam, but it's funny. Like William Flowers wanted to do an episode with Dracula, so Dracula's in the episode. He wanted to do an episode with aliens. There's an alien. 
If, if people like E.T., fine, then the aliens are going to come to Madam's house. Madam wanted to have a haunted house, but they didn't have the money and only have one set. Fine. Then the ghosts of the Marx Brothers, because of his friends of William Flowers that did a Marx Brothers routine, were going to come to William Flowers' house and be the ghosts of the Marx Brothers. You know, Madam's house. They had a set built for a puppet to take bubble baths. But it's also one of the episodes, a young Pee Wee Herman falls in love with Audrey, Judy Landers. Both of them. Both of Judy Landers. Whatever William Flowers wanted to do, he just threw it into that show. Like I said, Dracula and the aliens. Like they could just, he did anything he wanted. They did an exorcism. One time they turned into baby infantilis and they all regressed in age and they were wearing diapers and pacifiers and they were like, wow, that's in here? I said it was a dirty show. So people underestimate William Flowers' Madam. I could make it another playlist where I just list like every episode from other people's channels because Pretty much, I think every episode of Madam's Place is on YouTube because years ago, when we, when we were in lockdowns, I think, I just went and I found them and clip grabbed them. And <laughs> I, would, I would do work and listen to Madam's Place and we'll go, wow, that's really dirty. I can't believe they put that in there. So I don't have physical media to show you of here's DVDs of Madam's Place because um, I don't think there are any. It's like Drew Carey's show. I think they made the first season of Drew Carey's show on DVD and then they never put it out. So there's a bunch of things that have never been put out on DVD. One of them is Madam's Place, probably because William Flowers died from AIDS, I think. And that's probably why the show was canceled, because he got sick and he died. <coughs> I don't know if it was a hit because I don't know how a show like his that was on at like 10 o'clock on Saturday night could be a hit. But there was a time when people remembered Vicki Lawrence in Mama's Place. And uh, I know that now nobody has any idea what that was. But it was basically a show that was on Saturday night at like 9 or 10 o'clock. And I was like, who the hell ever watches this? But a lot of people did. Because the kids were home on Saturday. So they watched Madam's play. Not me. Well, I'd watch Madam's Place. I wasn't a kid, though. But the kids would watch... What's the one I'm talking about? Mama's House. I guess because they didn't really have a mom. Wait a minute. Is Tyler Perry's Medea just ripping off Mama's House? Could be. Um, get a Life. That's another sitcom that's always been a favorite of mine. It's a story of a 30-year-old paper boy, Chris Elliott, who lives in his parents' garage. And then the second season, he moves across the street and lives in the neighbor guy's garage. And he's still a paper boy. And it's another instance of a show where they did whatever they wanted. They had the car from the movie Death Race 2000. So Chris the paper boy had a John Henry match against the car from Death Race 2000. Um, he wouldn't have a whirlwind romance with a soap opera star. So he did. And then she moved in with him in the garage above his parent, in, uh, you know, in his parents' garage. Anything. He wanted a space alien, just like Madam's place. Chris Elliott wanted a space alien. So a space alien came and was mean to everybody and puked all over the place and got sick. And whatever they wanted, they get the trope of being locked in a meat locker. One of the episodes, paper boy Chris gets locked in a meat locker with his nemesis. So they have to learn how to get along even though they hate each other. And his nemesis is his best friend's wife. <laughs> That's another one of my favorite shows. The Sarah Silverman show is pretty good too. That's another example of a show where you can tell they did whatever they wanted to do. And it's pretty funny. And it's another mental defective like uh, Chris Elliott and Get a Life because he needed to be kept. 
You're right, like he lives in the garage, then he moves across the street to another garage. And then Sarah Silverman needs to be kept by her sister. I'm trying to think if there's, if there's any other good sitcoms where the person is just like some kind of defective that needs to be kept. Um, there's probably a bunch of these. Maybe now more than ever. It's probably a very popular thing. The, ca the, the character that never learns their lesson ever. How many seasons can you go with that and, and make sure that there's romantic tension between somebody and then, they, then no payoff. So anyway, other stuff that I liked, all bedroom farces, sitcoms, you're not allowed to do these things anymore. Um, destroy the past, kill it if you must. So anything that I would like, it's not even allowed anymore, and it's definitely frowned upon. I like Two Broke Girls. I'd say that's one of the last bedroom farces. And it's bad for you. It's just like Three's Company. It's just all about sex. It was all just about sex innuendo and jokes about sex and either getting laid or not getting laid enough and wanting to find love, but every week it's somebody else. Um, the same girlfriend that had Fuse Company then went through a friends phase, so we had to go to bed as six hour VHS tape filled up with friends episodes. Then we would go to sleep to them. Not sentimental about that. I can appreciate Three's Company. I like all the stuff I made fun of. It's funny to me. Listening through a pipe. Chrissy's having a baby? No. She was constipated. But Mr. Roper didn't know that. Funny misunderstandings. Somebody has to hide from the health inspector. So put a cream pie in their face and then you can't see that it's them. But that was the special cream pie that Jack was going to use to get an A at school. So instead they got a supermarket pie. And Jack did get an A because the pie was so good. But then he had to confess when Christy told him that she sat on the pie and then Larry ate that pie. And then, because he's disgusting. And then, and then they had to buy a pie from the supermarket. And it was a hair pie. And that's why his lesbian teacher loved it so much. Because it tasted like pussy. Three's Company. It's also the same thing as Two Broke Girls. It's basically Three's Company. Two. What another thing that I like that they can never be that I had I could have had DVDs to show you for this episode. Workaholics. It's the Three Stooges. The Workaholics is the Three Stooges. The three guys. Nothing ever works out for them, but they manage to get by and kind of get away with it, even though they always lose. I thought it was funny. They were idiots. I don't. I'm not like those guys. But it doesn't matter for me to laugh at them. I was like, this is how kids are now. They're stupid, like the workaholics. It's funny to me. They, they like Joe Rogan and Jackass, and that's that's the youth. I know, the Zoomers I know that aren't like workaholics at all. But I, um, I always thought the workaholics was funny. And when they did the last season, I was like, yeah, they can't, they're not allowed to do this stuff anymore. They're just going to be shutting down everything. They had the other one, Broad City. And it was these just two girls that, that were slobs. And then I was like, oh, yeah, they're not allowed to do that anymore either. They're not allowed to, like, walk around in hot pants and whatever they did on Broad City. So anyway, I liked a lot of things. You're not allowed to do any of those things anymore. I just wanted to complain about the stuff that I used to like that now it's not acceptable to even think that it would exist. What other shows that I like that are just no longer, like, just forget it. You can't, you're not allowed to like them anymore. Um, I used to like the How Roach comedies. I used to like Little Rascals, because that was a different time. And you were allowed to just outright abuse children. You could just, like, punch a kid in the face. It was funny. You know, grab a hold of a kid by the throat and put his face right up against the tailpipe and burn his eye, and you could see the searing smoke. And everybody laughs. <laughs> and the kids, oh, boy, 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 boy. And he's crying because his eye. Per hey, now that's, we call that kid Spotty now. That's, what was the little rascal that had the permanent burn mark around his eye? That poor little black kid. Terror, shameful. And they threw him in a burlap sack. And then that became his clothes for the whole rest. Mate, keep him in. Remember? No, we need to know who that kid is. He's the kid that they tried to drown him in the bag with a burlap sack. And now he wears the burlap sack because he's so poor. Oh, what'd they call him? Little Stumpy. 
So anyway, Little Rascals, Hal Roach comedies, abusing orphans, it's all true. Remember that really funny bit where they would always put out a cigarette butt in, a, in the middle of Alfalfa's forehead? Those are real cigarettes. That's why he looked like, of course somebody, uh, I can't talk about the Little Rascals. They all died horribly. It just would be shameful for me to talk about them. But anyway, sick, Little Rascals weren't sitcoms. What are other sitcoms I liked? Sometimes I liked things that were the shows of the progeny. I liked things that they liked. Um, Pete and Pete, that was one of the ones I was like, what are you watching? And then I liked it too. I was like, I don't know if you should be watching this. But it was like appropriately bizarre. And I'm like, I guess it's okay. And the music was pretty good. Pete and Pete, that's a kind of sitcom. You're not allowed to do that anymore. It's about a family. The future has no families. I just feel so sad because I know that there's stuff that other people like. So I'm just telling you about things that I know that I like in the form of sitcom. And I'm like, well, if I don't just start talking about it and start rambling, I'll never get on with the episode about it. So I was like, I'm, I try to do, there's going to be outtakes at the end of this. Where I'm like, I just try to do it. And I'm like, I can't, I'm, I'm sad. You know, I'm like talking about like, yeah, all the things that I liked. It's like I'm alive, but I'm dead already because things about me are unacceptable uh, I guess I, I, I better not let that poster I have of Clint Eastwood be anywhere near a window because there's gonna come a time when drones are flying by and they're gonna register that somebody has a poster of Clint Eastwood and that's an, not an acceptable male figure I thought we burned all the Clint Eastwood stuff so I exaggerate to clarify but just the same uh, it's sad like I'm in mourning of like I'm mourning for other people too. I feel bad for young people where it's like they just wanted to have a life. But I'm living in a time where I'm watching everything just being taken away and trying to have a sense of humor about it and trying to find out what's acceptable to God when all I have is anger and rage and hate and I just want to like, you know, throw rocks at demons. That's all I got. And and uh, it's sad, you know, like, yeah, you know how you, people would be excited about a video game and then maybe into adulthood people would be more too interested in childish things that need to be put away, but they could still have lives and families and they could still like a stupid thing or play game or whatever. But now it's just like, hey, I don't know what to go to college for and what kind of jobs is there going to be for anything? And whatever jobs seem like they might still be around, I don't know if I want to be part of the bad guys of that system. I don't know if I want to be a stormtrooper. You know, those are options for young people. They're like, yeah, maybe I'll see what it's like to live outside the system. If they can, maybe I can get away from Hunger Games. Then you'll just be preyed upon by other people. I just feel sad for young people. It's like, I'm not allowed to like anything. I've completed my collection. There's a couple of things I don't have that I would like to have. I don't have a copy of Soylent Green with Charlton Heston. I don't have that DVD. Um, I have a great, excellent, high quality definition copy of the first Planet of the Apes movie, but I don't have the case. What's another thing that I wish that I had that I don't have? There's just like a couple things that I don't care if I ever get them. I'm not, but if I saw them somewhere, I'd be like, oh cool, for the price of a rental. Now I have Soylent Green. I'm trying to think of the other thing that I want and that I don't have. A movie. Um, but if I saw it, I would grab it. I don't have a physical copy of Cherry 2000. If I saw that, if I saw that DVD, I'd buy it. The chickens. Um, so my collection is complete, and I'm like, yeah, like I don't care what's new, because nothing on TV. Like nobody even, you know, like when I see people and stuff, nobody says, oh, there was a really cool thing. Did you see the thing on TV? It all sucks. It's all like, hey, did you see they made like a real life version of the Squid Game? And then nobody knows what they think about that because everybody knows exactly what they think about that. They think that they're just going to keep trying to do shit like that to people until, until we're just watching people get executed on TV and, and it's, they call it a game show. And then you'll watch because it's people that used to be famous. 
And now, now Vanilla Ice is being executed in a game show. And it's not funny. You know? So, I don't want to be such a downer, but it's like, I just like Three's Company. And this is a subversion, subverter of society. This was a breakdown of morals and ethics and values. The horniness of it, the sheer horniness, the honest horniness of, of um, you know, Three's Company, which is seven, late 70s into the early, into the 1987 probably, or that's the latest. And they tried to come back with, Jack has a restaurant. It didn't work. Oh, he's still falling over stuff, but he's married now. No kids. It could be funny as a dad. And then they did. Eight simple rules for marrying my daughter or whatever. And then he died. So they couldn't finish it. David Spade replacing John Ritter. From somebody, you go from somebody that everybody loved to somebody that nobody's really sure if they like him, even though they think he's funny. I don't know if that works. It's like replacing Phil Hartman with John Lovitz. That doesn't work either. Another really good sitcom. What is going on? Another really good sitcom. News radio. That was pretty good. Until Phil Hartman died, then I stopped caring. To have all five seasons, and yet, I'm never going to watch the last one, and I never saw all of the fourth one, because I just stopped caring. I was like, they brought new characters in, and I don't care about any of them. Hey, his news radio, there's a new guy, and he looks like Brad Pitt. Now, who cares? That's not funny. And John Lovitz. People just don't want to look at a face that looks like that when they watch TV. I think that's the problem. They just don't want... That's why the critic was a hit. It was John Lovitz's talent without, without him being in it, really. I mean, guess what I'm saying is John Lovitz needs to be CG'd. But anyway, I like things, and it's sad that everything's being taken away. So, like, I, I just imagine a young person looking forward to new video games, and I'd say, "Hey, you got any new cool games coming out?" And then they're like, yeah. But the answer would be now if I asked somebody, you know, like a niece or nephew or whatever, got, what are the cool games coming out? Anything cool for Christmas? No, everything's terrible actually. They're taking away our ability to play games with friends. Um, they're censoring us. My one friend, none of us can play now for three months because he said N-word and our whole team got banned. And the N-word was just, he said N-word, like he said N-W-O-R-D. And then because of that, now none of our, none of our group can be in um, Grand Theft Auto uh, raids where we rob a place and escape, trying to escape the city and everything. We're not allowed to do that now for three months. We can't even play with each other anymore. It sounds terrible, but I do feel sad for stuff like that. Because like nothing's allowed to be cool. And then somebody hears a song. And like, would you hear this song? From Lil Uzi Nas, uh, Nas Satan? Yeah. And then your friend shows you the other video on their phone. And it's uh, how they worship the devil and they're tearing out his... Yeah, but he tore his girlfriend's throat out. It's like, great, I can't listen to nobody. Taylor Swift's a witch. So you know what I mean? Like nobody has anything cool and everything, everything's a product. So anything that anybody would like, everybody knows like, wait a minute, they did, they did the Pfizer commercials and there's them, forget all those guys. And then, and then they're making music and everything's just about the devil. It's like all commercials. Everything's like just crappy commercials. They just want you to buy de the devil. I just want you to buy into the beast system, really is what it is. So there's no room for Three's Company and physical media. I, um, it's sad, you know. I didn't realize that Fahrenheit 451 wasn't about burning paper. It was about melting my DVD collection by, by drone or something, or by laser satellite. Zap! 
Another library, another video library of Alexandria destroyed. I'm trying to think of something stupid that I have. Now the Earth will completely forget about that show that Bob Denver did after Gilligan's Island about being like on a wagon train. But it was like wagon, tr instead of being on an island, they don't have a home anywhere. They did that, I have it, I should get the, I forget what it's called, it's like Gulliver's Travels or something. Whatever it's called, it's just, Gil it's Bob Denver in Gilligan's Island with surrogates of all the Gilligan's Island people. But they're like in the desert on a wagon train. Why would they even put that on DVD? Somebody owned it and they were like, okay, put it on, put the, put the DVD out. Nobody wanted it. Nobody even knew that it existed. They forgot that they made a sequel to Gilligan's Island with Bob Denver, where it's cowboys. You know what people don't care about anymore? Westerns. <clears throat> I have a lot of Westerns. That's not allowed anymore. That's going to go away. Because all the Westerns I have, are, they're like all Clint Eastwood ones. And if he's in them, it's usually worth watching, which is a pretty good track record, which is like all of them. Name me, name me a bad Clint Eastwood Western that wasn't worth, doesn't have anything noteworthy in it. The Gauntlet, that's not even a Western and that's still pretty good. Um, so, the Westerns, like, I'm just, I, I don't know what the point of that was. Just stuff that I like that's like, it's done. Like, they're not gonna do that anymore. Because Clint Eastwood is in the Westerns. Or John Wayne. I'm not really into a lot of John Wayne Westerns, to be honest with you. Though. But I know he was in them. He was the Duke and everything. But that's not allowed anymore. Because all the cowboys were actually vaqueros and they were either black or Jewish or Mexican. But not Clint Eastwood. So it's not historically, ac historically accurate. So it can't be an Italian man's fantasy of the old West in America. No, it has to be. They have all these rules. If you want to make a movie now, like you could make good movies that have hire everybody, every color of the rainbow, United Nations, every movie like that. It has to be. They could still be good, but the whole point is nothing's allowed to be good. You had a window of time and think, I guess this is good, but it is compared to whatever you're going to get now because this stuff is so good compared to whatever they're doing now. I mean, what's the latest comedy? Uh, Jennifer Hunger Games is just buck naked with shaved pubis and takes a money shot in the face. Is that the is that a punchline now? That's funny because she was in all these other movies and now she's taking money shots. I, I, I don't even care anymore. You know what I mean? Like, I'm just the point is I'm complaining that things are ruined. So I was like, well, I'm allowed to like I'm allowed by God. I think am I? Is this idle chatter? Am I allowed to talk about how like? They're just ending the world of families and values and ethics and morals and I don't know how to stop it. My videos were never big enough hits out here in the realm of the shadow band to ever get enough attention to change the world to delay God's return. But no, things move on despite my efforts, move on. Just like Book of Revelation said they would. <laughs> and, you know, I like, yeah, I like shit too. And it's weird and embarrassing to talk about it. But like Madam's Place, it's such a weird thing. I like when somebody had a show and did whatever they wanted with it. And it works pretty much every time in every instance. So I've always liked in my like favorites of sitcoms definitely get life with Chris Elliott. He was a Letterman writer. And he would do weird stuff on Letterman. And then he just did had a show and they, those guys just did whatever they wanted and it's very funny. Not every not always doing whatever you want is funny. I think Sucker Punch by Zack everything by Zack Snyder, letting him do whatever he wants. Some people like that. Some people never did. I think I never did. Then again I don't care about Batmans. 
I don't care how many multiverses of Batmans there are. I don't like, I think I like Adam West Batman. I think that's where it begins and ends with me. I think that's the preferred tone of Batman for me. 1960s, like, what is there, two seasons of Batman? That's enough. <laughs> uh, although I've seen a lot of Batman cartoons. I've seen a lot of those Batman DC movies. I'm being honest, I've seen them. Um, I can't remember anything about them. Arkham, the one where they, they did Escape Arkham or something. That was the Suicide Squad movie they should have done. I was like, that was a, that's a cartoon. It's not made for kids. Because right in the beginning, there's like a sex scene or something. I'm like, I don't want to see this either. I don't want to see cartoon sex scenes. So I saw the Assault on Arkham. And I'm like, what is this? Like a Walter Hill Suicide Squad story? Not really. But, um... But it was better than either one of those Suicide Squad movies and it was a cartoon that they just went right to video. That was better. So that's why I watched it. Somebody said it's better than the movies. They were right. The cartoon of the Suicide Squad more correctly captured the tone of how much I'm supposed to care about any of those weird looking guys. Why do I care about a clown lady with a baseball bat that used to be a psychologist? She's nuts. That's like its whole own movie. Just do the Lady Gaga's Harley Quinn and she's nuts. That's probably going to be a more compelling thing to get people to riot or whatever the hell they want a movie to do now. People just wanted Star Wars. I, it hurts. I don't care about Star Wars or G.A. Joe or He-Man or any of your other toys. Star Trek. But it does bother me that for the whole world, for everybody, on purpose, the people who made your dreams also are the same people that broke your dreams and ruined them so it's like like no it's like people will like now that they know what happened to Luke Skywalker they don't care about Star Wars anymore because before they made the movies at least whatever you want could have happened to Luke Skywalker and now you know that he was a wimp and he stayed home on a pillow and meditated to death because he couldn't face his nephew. Han Solo was a deadbeat dad, and Indiana Jones is an utter failure who nailed his students. His son died a casualty of war, and then his wife divorced him, and, he, and that's Indiana Jones. And now, it's not even about him because his son is dead. It's about his goddaughter that he didn't even know that he had. Dun, 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 dun. And Wolverine decided to sleep in on the day when he was supposed to cross the border with his daughter and all the rest of the orphans. But instead, no, I'm going to stay here and sleep in and you guys cross the border by yourselves. What the hell else did Wolverine have to do that day? He already knew he was dying of amanium poisoning or whatever. So then he decides he's going to sleep in when they're... That's the stupidest thing. It's as stupid as Wolverine being caught by the guy that wanted to catch him right at the beginning of the movie when Wolverine goes to the guy's fake funeral and instead of taking the admanium out of his bones, they put a fake spider... They put a spider in him when he's asleep and then make him be the bodyguard of his granddaughter, which is the only thing his enemy cares about is his, is his granddaughter. So then he gives Wolverine to protect her in a weakened state to somehow lead him back to him so that he can then get the adamantium out of his bones. It doesn't even make any sense. You had, he, they caught him at the beginning. At the guy's, he, he came, Wolverine came to the guy's funeral. It doesn't even make any sense. And we get it, all the X-Men are gay, and it's where all the gay superheroes go live because nobody wants to hang out with them because they have powers and are afraid to be molested or something. So there's the X-Men. And Deadpool is Spider-Man with cursing that's part gay and, vi and ultra-violence. So there you go. There's all your superheroes. Aren't they great? You can't even have that anymore. Even, 
anything you like, they have to make it so that it's terrible. So people invested so much in movies and TV, but if you watch them, all you're gonna get now is destroyed. And if you do what I've done, which is watch old stuff, you're gonna realize how everything you watch was in some way helping to break down morals and ethics and values of the family. Because if a nation of families is a nation that will defend the life of the family. But if you have people who don't care about families, who don't have families, then that's the divide and conquer strategy, which is the only one that they've ever needed. So you divide everybody and break up the family. And that's what happened. So if you go in the past to see movies about family vacations, and if you watch movies now about family vacations, the last family vacation movie I saw was about people pretending to be a family to smuggle drugs. I had Jennifer Aniston. It sucked. And it's just mean. Like, Three's Company was funny, but they cared about each other. Now things are just mean. It's just mean. So your, your, your programming is made to hate you. So I have all the old stuff, but I'm like, yeah, it sucks. Like we live in a time where like, I don't see any way to, to, to stop the destruction of everything where like young people like Stranger Things season four, it's a big hit and everything. What they love is a nostalgia for being able to just go to the mall and do stuff. I mean, sure, Stranger Thing has demons and stuff, but it's almost like some weird way, like cathartic or whatever, because okay, there's monsters and demons in Stranger Things, and it's like very overt and transparent, it's right there, it's in your face, these are monsters. But in the real world, those things are there, but it's just in terms of like, you know, the world is evil and bad things happen to people even though they didn't do anything bad. And whole, you know, the wealth elite whose fortune shaped the fates of nations will work a long time on a multi-generational plan to get us to this point so that they can set up, you know, what Ptolemy and Nero couldn't and all the other guys couldn't do, which was to make a beast system and mark everybody and <laughs> so people just want so anyway I guess what I'm trying to get at is people just want to have lives and like stuff and it hurts so bad now that the young people can't have that like they can't just have like a fucking life like anywhere in the world like yeah I'm mourning the west and everything but it's like their brains are even fried where they think they're supposed to like tear shit down you know a lot of them are brainwashed and they'll get nothing in return. It's like, here's here's your life and your possibility and a future and a chance for change. And you could have grew out of how horrible you are now. And now everything's being taken away f for everyone. I, I hate it. I just wish I could stop it. But I don't know what to do. So I'm you know, making a YouTube. It's like my condolences for all of us. I feel like every episode, every video I do has been that lately. I'm in a funk. And um, it's like I'm mourning. It's like, yeah, no, nothing's allowed to be any good. Like, I could find every now and then I'd find a movie. I didn't know that movie. This is really good. And then I find out it came out like five years ago or ten years ago. I just didn't know about it. But everything's old. So what I'm trying to get across is it breaks my heart that I know that the stuff that's aimed at most people to like that they used to latch on to, even though it wasn't good for them, isn't even allowed. Now stuff is just being made to destroy, like on purpose, like it's a willful effort to destroy the person watching it. Like they wanna, like your pop stars have been making music to kill you for a long time. It's, it's just, it hurts to know it. You know what I mean? Like stuff sinking in. Like I knew stuff intellectually because I've been complaining about it for years. You know, when I had no hair on my head and everything and no hair on my face. And and now, I'm like, yeah, they really are just ruining everything for you. And it's heartbreaking. Like, I feel hard, I feel awful for other people that are strangers that I don't know. It's just like the collective we, if I should even put it that way. I hate it every time I use that word. But, you know, like, I hate how everything's being ruined for people where it's like 
Yeah, they're like ruining stuff on purpose to make it so you don't have a future to the point where they're burning down like food manufacturing stuff and destroying crops just to push famines and poisoning water so people won't have water. And, and I'm not allowed to talk about stuff. Um, and then they have people com trying to commit their, their schemes, their, their evil plots, and then when it gets exposed, they shut up anybody who talks about that girl that was trying to, you know, be a terrorist and everything. <sighs> so, I, I don't know where I'm going with this. I guess I've just been kind of bummed out. And it's just not, um... I, I hate it. I wish I could do something. I'm just pointing out, I guess. Yeah, it sucks. It's not fair. It's not fair for young people that no matter what you want to do, they're taking it away from you. Like, forget about even having a couple years. You just have, like, a shit job or something where you try and figure it out. Now, or a year or something. It probably feels like years. Now it's just, like, you might have that job. And then how long we have the job when nobody can buy f any food? Because that's what they want. That's why they let there be walking dead marathons on every holiday all weekend long. Just constant non-stop people eating each other in graphic detail. And how there's not enough and how we're not going to make it. And this is how you should treat each other. You should kill each other. You should hunt each other. You should eat each other. Don't trust anybody. Ten years of the walking dead. And I'm sure there's videos up on YouTube now saying, here's how he, the downfall of The Walking Dead, here's how one of the greatest shows ever got all caught up in wokeness. And I'm like, dude, The Walking Dead was always terrible. It was always bad for you. George Romero made a movie. It was Dawn of the Dead. You could say Night of the Living Dead. But George Romero made Dawn of the Dead. And that's the thing that made people think about zombies like that. And he was trying to talk about consumerism and probably post-consumerism. Still wanting the things of... Cons this is what people want now. Kids, young people like Stranger Things because it reminds them of a nostalgia for a time when things were safer and easier and they had possibilities and they could have hopes and dreams. Now, of course, in Stranger Things, they're all being hunted down by the Gemogorgons and all this shit. But underneath it all, a big part of the appeal of Stranger Things, I really want to nail that specifically. It's the 80s aesthetic. It's all the aesthetic of all that stuff. Like, people like the 80s vibe because it was the height of consumerism and things were possible and then more things got good into the 90s. And in the 90s are pretty good too. But the 90s is like, you know, like 90s into the, two, by 2008 you have all the malls are bombed out and shit. And, you know what I mean? Like the malls are going away and stores and it's getting harder. You can see the breakdown of consumerism. And, um, you know, here we are now. And I hate just being a guy just talking about it, another commenter. I want to like, uplift and inspire but I don't have any cool videos about how to start a fire with nothing or you know whatever how to make all the money now I, I don't know um, so anyway I'm here to talk about pop culture dystopia which most assuredly we are in pop culture hell world where they're phasing out physical media because they don't even want you to be able to have that. They only want you to be able to have what they give you. So the streaming services and the conglomeration of things. I've been saying it for years. All your entertainment's just going to be called the Disney or whatever they call it. And it's just going to be one thing. So you don't have to say watching TV or your phone or the internet. If you just say Disney, everybody, you, that means online. Oh, that's where everything is, how they tell us to be, how to think, and that's where the movies are. And the changed versions of all the movies. And everything. Like, they made the new Indiana Jones movie. And a big part of it that people liked was, they said everything at the old where they had de-aged de guy pretending to be Indiana Jones with Indiana Jones' face on it. All that stuff we loved. But then when it went into the movie of old Indiana Jones, then it sucked. 
It was just about humiliating him, like they did with Captain Picard, and then just humiliate him. Oh, you thought he was a good guy? He was the worst guy. Everybody hated Picard. That's the first thing they did to him. It's like when they went into Iraq, and they said, okay, you guys, you've been seed savers for centuries. We're here now. You guys aren't allowed to save seeds anymore. So you can't have DVDs anymore or Blu-rays. It's all being phased out. And I've even seen it being phased out at the secondhand places and buyback. I'm like, huh, isn't that weird how when the chains announce across the board that they're going to phase out like physical media that you can buy it at Best Buy or Walmart that, um, and wherever else is left, um, that the buyback places and Goodwills and secondhand places, at least in my area and around my area, all started doing the same thing. They all started, like, I'm like, God, I just don't have VHS anymore. Like, anywhere, any of the secondhand places. I'm like, people would still buy them because there always was people buying them. It doesn't matter. This is like, just phase it out. This is like, I remember living in a place where they made it against the law to garbage pick because people were always throwing out stuff and then people would garbage pick and take it. So they made it a $150, $250 or $150 fine for garbage picking. And then they came in and set up these Echo Restore, Goodwill Echo Restore places. And they just started collecting all the stuff that people took and then put it in a shop and sold it. And they were collecting it from all over the place. So there was a network of people giving away garbage, like, you know, a college kid getting their first couch from the garbage is now a $150 fine when I used to live in asshole land. I'm just so frustrated with comedy. How am I not supposed to call somebody a fool or an idiot now? Aren't we living in times now where I'm allowed to do that? Do I really have to face God because I called somebody a fool? Because, like, they decided to get rid of their wood stove and put in an electric pellet stove and they live in an area where they keep having the power outages and stuff all the time in the winter because that's coming for everyone. I'm just so frustrated with the stupidity and the inability of people to, it's just like, people have this thought like, it'll get better, it'll be okay. What the fuck are you talking about? Obviously not. So anyway, I just wanted to watch Three's Company and I just wanted to, um, you know, like, I just wanted to do the same things as a lot of other people. I just wanted to have a life and enjoy it. And instead, everybody's life is being changed because of like rich people and BlackRock and shit like that. And it's a long-term plan. Kissinger's still alive, that rat bastard. Am I, allowed, am I gonna go to hell for saying that? I'm just so frustrated. And I can't stand this lady talking in baby voice anymore. Shut the hell up. Um, so anyway, it's very frustrating. I hope you can hear me over the TV. I hope the TV wasn't competing with me. Oy. I'm going to put this up anyway because I just don't give a shit anymore. I don't know what the point of me doing videos is. Just having some kind of a breakdown. Um, yeah, so I guess I just wanted to talk about like physical media and how like whatever it is you like that you're not allowed to like that anymore and that you'll never see it again and whatever you already have is like the only example of that and if anybody tries to make something cool it'll be suppressed or they'll find any reason to like kill the people that made it or rape their families or whatever it is or make them renounce it under penalty of Muslim rape or whatever rape laws or something so I just you know I want to fight the good fight, but, you know, who's doing that? Good fight ministries? I don't think so. So it just, it's weird. It just feels like, it just feels, I feel sympathy for everybody I do. It's like, it sucks to be, like, I'm old. I get to have a life. I get to have everything. Okay, they're going to kill me. Okay, and I die. Then it's over. But it's just sad for people, like, they didn't get to have a life. 
they don't get to have a family or wife because everybody's so messed up because you know whatever's wrong like every time I meet a girl she's blown like you know umpteen million dudes and and every time a girl meets a guy there's something wrong with him and he's plays video games or he doesn't have a job or whatever he has no future I, I feel bad for everybody I mean of course people are having an end of the world party they you know like it kind of it's an end of society party and you know gay people are, are really are so messed up not all of them I guess but they they really have songs now saying that they want to come after the kids to make them gay I guess your kids can be gay if they want to be why do you why do you care so the whole world's gone mad everybody's crazy people want to abuse animals legally they want to make it legal to abuse animals to essay assault animals or whatever have them allowed to say it they want to kill a baby up until three years old. <laughs> um, and one of your favorite movies and TV shows, you're not allowed to like those things anymore. And the whole world is an anti human movement that may, wants you to think that because climate change, that man is no good, like that we're no, that we're just garbage. And I feel it's more like that we've been made into garbage. But I see people that just want things to make sense in a basic way of man and woman. And nobody can give it to them because everything is red-pilled or femme-pilled or whatever the female pill is. And all that shit's bad for you too. And it's just at every turn people are looking to make sense of the world. Especially if you're young and have a developing mind and sensibilities. And there's just everything to tear you every which way so that you just can't find out basic stuff. Like this is a man and this is a woman easily. And then when you do find out what that is and how to function, the whole world offers you no support because it's tearing down the very foundations of all the support structures of that would help a family. And what did world famous asshole Aleister Crowley say? He, he would say it all the time. He had a poem about it. He would say that the family was enemy number one. Destroy the family and you can unleash hell upon earth and make the world so bad that, you know, the book of Revelations happens and God has to come back. But I didn't really want to be living during that. I didn't want to see all the... I didn't want to be living... I didn't want to be dying in the prelude to the end of the end of days. And I'm just so miserable and I don't see any joy and I get why people are unhappy. And I'm like, yeah, I don't know what to tell you. I don't have any silver lining to offer you. It's all, when you're dead, it's over. But you can't do that. You have to wait till somebody kills you. You can't. You're not even in charge of that. You're not allowed to do anything. God just wants you to suffer, I guess. But you're supposed to love him a whole lot. <laughs> and all your movies and TV suck now. Sorry, forever. It's only gonna get worse. Duh! Here are the outtakes. Duh! So I'm in a weird mode, and I thought, well, I knew that I wanted I wanted to do an episode to talk about sitcoms, specifically bedroom farces, because as destructive as they were to society, um, they're not going to make them anymore because they're about men and women pursuing each other and all the jokes that can come from that. And in a lot of cases, from misunderstandings about romantic things, the bedroom farce, all this, it's all done. It's all, these, all these things are gone. And wherever these things exist on streaming, uh, even when I go to the secondhand place and buyback place, they have no shortage of DVDs and stuff. But these places are being told to like dial it back and not sell them anymore. And not sell VHS's at the Goodwills and stuff like that. Which is kind of strange. Um, but it is happening. Because in the retail outlets, Best Buy, Walmart, Target, whatever's left. They're all dialing back the DVDs and physical media. So, I have a lot of physical media of seasons of sitcoms and bedroom farces. I said it seems like the Zoomers like uh, Friends from the 1990s 
probably because their parents watched it when they were growing up, or their mothers or whatever, they're single mothers, so they, they grew up listening to friends, so it's comforting, I guess. So now they're grown up, and there's a nostalgia for friends. Maybe that has to do with the age, the people that watched Friends in the 90s and going into their 50s or something and, you know, aging, I don't know. But I do know that, that it's over. Like, there's stuff that just isn't going to happen. Like, Three's Company. They're redoing Three's Company. And it's three... Nobody's whatever they are. Like, it's three girls, but one's a trans man. One's a Puerto Rican waiter. You know what I mean? They're all dudes. or You know what I mean? Like, everything. And it's a, and, then, and then a guy. It's Three's Company. It's one guy. He really is gay. Jack Tripper really is actually gay. And Janet and Chrissy are cam girls or whatever. That's Three's... And they're both gay. And everyone... All three of them are gay. And, and Chrissy's in love with a dog. Like an animal. A greyhound or something. So every week there's different pets coming in. That's Three's company now. So, no structure of like, I said I have physical media of a lot of these things. Some stuff, ow, I don't. I'm sorry, I'm having a hard time doing episodes. More outtakes. <laughs> so we have the technology. They could make any kind of movie you want now. But they'll never make the movie. They have the data and the analytics. They know what people want to see. And if they made what you wanted, you would love it and go, yeah, it was, and it was, I, yeah, they made, it was great. It was exactly everything they said it would be. And then there was one or two twists and turns and surprises. And then you would like those too. But I wasn't expecting this or this. It was great. That's when people find out they like something that nobody knew if it was going to stick. They did Guardians of the Galaxy. And then people liked that. And it was the same thing with um, Blade, Vampire Hunter. They made three Blade movies. Nobody knew if he was, they were going to like it. But, but it was like, well, it's a vampire movie. And it's just a guy, basically. And some teeth. So Blade, it was a go project, and then it became a hit. And then they did the Punisher, Punisher Warzone, not so much a hit. And they did Iron Man, it's a hit. So they start doing all superhero stuff. This is after the X-Men. All the X-Men movies are terrible. <laughs> They're weird. Did you ever see the first X-Men movie Walt Wolverine slashes through a wall? It looks terrible. It's like a cartoon. And then maybe slashes through the Statue of Liberty or something. And then it looks like somebody going to a convention to do cosplay of Wolverine. Because he's got gel in his hair and stuff. And it looks stupid. And it looks like somebody going to the comic book convention. <laughs> I'll do this one over. <laughs> one of the things that's important. Most 12 step programs. And recovery and all this stuff. Is making amends. So. Maybe you know about this. Where somebody comes back into your life and bothers you. And they're like. Hi. I just wanted to let you know that I used to be a bad person and I drank too much, I did drugs. I'm like, yeah, I know. And then, and then they're like, well, I just want to let you know that I forgive you. You do? Well, I wasn't even thinking about you at all because when I did think about you, it's usually something not nice because you ripped me off. You said those lies about me. But you forgive me now? Okay, great. Can you go away now? I don't have any money or anything. No, I don't want any money. Actually, I want to say I'm sorry about stealing this things and the money. I know I said you ripped me off. Do you have the money? Well, no, but I wanted to make amends. But 
it's also this it used to be the same strategy for some door-to-door -door business salesman where you'd go to a meeting on how to sell super sharp knives that never need to be sharpened but if they don't if they do go dull well then you just send your knives away in the mail for free and then they come back in the mail sharpened for free but the way that they made their business selling knives in the mail and sharpening them in the mail I guess was by anyone who worked for them write down the names of everyone you know and that's your client list now so I can't help but think but the world such as it is now there's not door-to-door -door salesman stuff anymore but if there was there would be problems with like hey remember me your name is on a list of people I had to write no it's for work just wait let me finish I used to date your sister yeah it's me Mark it was the guy with the drug problem so I'm better now hold on no, wait I want to come to your house no, no no don't come to my house no no just let me finish no this is for work it's work related no I want to come to your house I'm selling knives <laughs> No, really, I'm selling knives. And if they ever go dull, but they never do, you can just send them back to the factory in the mail, and then the knives come back to you in the mail, and you don't have to lift the finger. They'll be sharpened again. So anyway, I'm gonna come to your house and I'm gonna show you my knives. No, you just wait. No, no, it's not just you. There's a whole list of people. I had to write all their names on it. No, it's like a list of everybody I know. And I'm gonna come to their houses with knives still. <laughs> and it just sounds like you're gonna get in trouble, like they're gonna make phone calls. <laughs> Say, hey, this guy used to date my sister and he's nuts and he used to be all messed up on drugs. And he said he's coming over here with knives. Go call my sister and call police. I'm gonna call police. You call my sister and tell her not to let anybody in there. He's talking about coming with knives. He's everyone he knows and <laughs> whatever. <clears throat> so movies and TV. I haven't I don't catch anything new. And one of the newer things I saw, which was a couple of years ago, was Jackass 4. And it was terrible. And I kept waiting for Bam Margera to show up, and then he didn't, and I was like, oh, he's not in this. So then I thought, oh, they'll do Jackass 4.5, and then he'll, it'll be the Bam cut. I don't know if they did Jackass 4.5, but um, there's no Bam cut. So I think what happened to me is what happened to a lot of people. I thought, huh. Yeah, it's terrible without that guy in it. And then I thought about it, maybe too long. And I was like, yeah, none of his friends are in it. Like all the CKY guys, they're all phased out. Like nobody's in that and nobody's in Jackass anymore that's from CKY. And I was like, yeah, that's the thing that was cool about Jackass when it was CKY without Johnny Knoxville or Steve-O or the tiny skateboard guy or the big fat guy and I was like, yeah, like, that's the thing that I remember watching with the developing progeny that was the good stuff. It wasn't the jackass stuff that was good. It was the CKY videos, and the music was better, too. I don't know if that was all that band. I know CKY is a band. But I was like, yeah, Jackass 4 showed me that it's CKY was the thing that was really cool. And if you just take all the jackass stuff out of CKY, well, then... Just don't watch Jackass. You can watch Viva La Bam. And forget about that show where Steve O's riding around on rhinos and the other guys on a lion naked and shit. Forget about all that stuff. And Johnny Knoxville, there's whole firecrackers in his hands and stuff. Forget about all that. And just go back to watching Viva La Bam get the, and CKY from the Goodwills and stuff like that. But I've also noticed, um, I say about going to the buyback places and Goodwills, I've noticed they're, they're, consolid, they're, they're making their um, DVD section smaller. The Goodwill, they're like, yeah, we're just putting all the DVDs here. 
We're gonna emphasize, and this is every Goodwill I've went to, every buyback store. I even said it to the girl behind the register. I said, yeah, they're, they're really uh, paring down the DVDs. I said, that's a much smaller section. She's like, yeah, they really reduced it. And, um, I mean, the places used, people used to give away so many DVDs, they, they would have a bins outside. I don't know if there was a problem with homeless people or whatever, harassing people at the bins, but people used to look inside the free bins. And I used to grab like whole seasons of things. I was like, huh, I like this. And I'd take like a whole shopping bag full of like free DVDs and stuff like that. And they're part of my collection now. Stuff I would never watch. I got them for free. They don't do the free bins anymore. But also none of these places, like it's just a decision across the board. Because I heard it done corporately like Best Buy is going to get, we're going to have less DVD. They're getting rid of DVDs. No physical media, no games. They're getting rid of them. And then... GameStop, they were closed and somebody bought them. So I guess you can go buy games at GameStop, but they never sold movies. GameStop sells games and toys and collectibles of Japanese cartoons and Star Wars and J. Joe and shit, whatever they're selling at GameStop. But there's less places to buy stuff, people get everything online. But. <clears throat> They're phasing out the physical media. So it was Walmart, Best Buy, and Target. All the play, Target still had big physical media. Maybe they'll have the biggest left, but they're not doing good. They're wasting money on stuff that people don't want to buy stuff. They do the rainbow stuff and people are like, yeah, we still don't want to buy it. But it's on clearance. Yeah, but that's not really selling it. Stop making it. Um, we bought that as a joke. A joke. Anyway, uh, so they're phasing out like across the board, like no physical media, like they just don't want you to have it. So even if you go to a Goodwill, Salvation Army, or to buyback places, I don't know where it's going. I should find that out, but physical media is being like taken away at, from everywhere. I mean, I, I, I know that it's not people are buying it less. It's just they're taking the sections away. Because anytime I haunt any of those places, there's always lots of people buying movies, like physical media. It's a great place. It's like a video store. I say it all the time. Goodwills and thrift stores and buyback places are great places to buy physical media. Because for the price of a rental, you do own the whole thing. And I've got such great deals uh, of like, here's like the whole movie series, very Planet of the Apes thing or whatever. And two ninety nine, or whole seasons of a show. Wow, I got every season, all five seasons of Fringe and for 15 bucks. Which it was, Fringe was a neat thing. Until they started to explain anything to you. And then it was dumb. I was like, it's about this, parallel worlds, then who cares? So I have all seasons of Fringe. It's J.J. Abrams when people liked him. And I've never even seen the fourth and fifth season of Fringe, because when I got to the first episode of the fourth season, I was like, I don't even care anymore. So I've never seen it. So when we were under lockdowns, I discovered Star Trek The Next Generation, Deep Space Nine. And I never, I never, I'm probably never gonna watch Fringe. I didn't like Lost from the start. I was like, I don't care, I don't wanna watch this. So people kept talking about Lost and I didn't care. So all these things, these cultural touchstones. Well, if you're trying to destroy the culture, there won't be anything any cool anymore. There won't be any cool stuff anymore. So I'm sorry, I feel bad. You know, that all the young people just have... It's like, hey, you're living in a time where no matter what you want, we're destroying it and wrecking it for you. And they're getting rid of physical media. I'm sorry. I hate it because I like physical media. And now even the places where you would go to get it secondhand, they're eliminating it. They're discouraging. Like, I know it sounds strange. I know it's... If it's happening where I live, it's probably happening all over the place. It's not just my little area. Where I live isn't special or especially, you know, like, has the values where they're gonna be like, 
Nope. No more Goodwills. We don't want anybody to own anything anymore. You just donate your stuff to the Goodwill and we melt it. That's the Goodwill now. We're going to start over again. We're melting all the stuff that we donate to the Goodwill is getting melted into. Carcinogenic Lego plastic Lego blocks. Um, so anyway, it's just kind of a bummer. Also, for people who collect games, I don't know how many, f like, flea markets and dirt malls and all that kind of stuff exist, but that's just going to be more like life. <laughs> You're trying to get a prescription for kindly old people that live near you, so you have to go in where people are and, hey, man, do you, do you want to buy an app? No, just give me your thumbprint. Hey. My mom is lonely. But look at my mom. Look at her boobs. Whatever. It's gonna get rough. Do you want me to kill somebody for you, mister? How, what, how, what are you, a little girl? No, actually I'm 42 years old. I have some kind of glandular problem. I'm this, I'm a deadly assassin, a child assassin. Look, dude, you gotta give me something. I'm just gonna just stab you right now. Look at where this is. Hey, check this. And this, this 42 year old woman that looks like a very tired child is gonna stab you with a Hello Kitty box cutter. <laughs> I don't know, I've got nothing. Um, I'm just tired of complaining about stuff. I don't watch YouTubes anymore because it's people complaining about stuff or telling you how to pray specifically because it's this part of Book of Revelation. <laughs> it's all over if, if this happens and then you watch the video and you're like, yeah, that's the same thing we've all been saying for like a decade now. It's still, it's still happening. We're still, it's, it's, we're soaking in it. Like now. So anyway, I just think it's sad, yeah. So, winter's coming and everything. One of my plans for the winter, I have to get some outside things situated. But part of my plans for the winter are to turn the upstairs into part video store. And then I'm just going to start doing podcasts by stacks of movies with all kinds of junk that I've accumulated over the years that makes it look like a mom and pop video store with all your movie memorabilia junk laying around because I have lots of this stuff. And one of the things I've been wanting to do for years, which I'm definitely going to get around to, Red Letter Media did it for me already. They did the nerd crew. So I was like, I was going to do a thing like that where I put all this junk that I had and then just trash the set and trash the junk. And it would be a lot of fun destroying everything. So I still want to do that. So I'm going to do it. But I just don't know how funny it will be because Red Letter Media had like a whole bunch of friends and they made those together, making fun of all that stuff and they would buy all the same, all the same stuff that I probably, is what I probably have, which is like clearance stuff that nobody wants. Like, look, it's a lawn ornament Yoda. Here's an oversized Chewbacca head. And I have all kinds of junk, pink flamingos. I have posters of things I don't even like. Like it's some kind of Chinese game. I don't know what that is. What's Final Fantasy? So, I have all this junk and I just wanted to get mad and frustrated that they ruined the whole pop culture and everything. And just trash everything in a funny way or fall over it. And ruin all these, you know, break the arm off of C-3PO and just ruin all the shit. Smash the stormtroopers, hollow head, and you know, just whatever. I just want to have fun, break all the stuff that's already broken. That political activists working in companies that work that are programmed by corporations to do corporate interest things to destroy society, twelve monkeys style, or whatever you want to call it. So, so anyway, I'm sorry you can't buy physical media. But I'm going to be like Angry Video Game Nerd's basement. And instead of his basement, my upstairs is going to have... Like there's an area that has yellow walls. 
So I'm just going to use that as like a video store because it reminds people of Blockbuster. Maybe I'll put a stripe of blue tape along it. The further, that's all I need. I just need a stripe of the blue paint marking tape. <laughs> there, my video store. So this is a really shitty video. I'm sorry. Um, I just, you know, like I don't want to chronicle everything about the breakdown of our lives. And you know, how sad I feel for young people. Like... Hey, like you're watching the end of everything. That's part of the thing where I like Turbo Kid. Because that's how I felt like it was for young people now. Like, hey, there's two young people and they fell in love. And they're all messed up. Both of them. And then, like, society's ruined. Like, there's just nothing. Like, hey, like, we can do anything we want, but there's, like, nothing we can do. And everything's dangerous and... It just sucks. It just I, it sucks watching everything get worse and ruined for everybody. And then people are like, "Yeah, man, it's like the purge." And I'm like, "Yeah, stop saying shit like that. They want you to do that." So anyway, I just wanted to come at you and rap about how much uh, I'm glad I have my DVD collection. And now when I look at those things at the Goodwill or the buyback store. Salvation Army or whatever thrift store um, I'm looking for oh that's a rare one maybe I have another copy of that oh look at that's a, D that's a Sony DVD player with the remote and a lot of different Sony remotes are compatible and then that's another DVD thing <laughs> it's just stupid it's just stupid stupid shit I'm gonna go I don't think I should be doing these anymore. I'll figure out how to be nice to you and tell you things you like and cheer you up. How to edify, how to build you up. Rather than postmodern, destruct everything. <sighs> Everybody's doing that. Hey, I'm just some other jerk talking to you about the breakdown of everything. Gotta go. Bye. I'll be right back with more. And here it is now. Hi. This episode is just a, I just want to do whatever I want. So we're going to talk about my favorite sitcoms and things of TV and movies that you're kind of not allowed to do anymore or ways in which the world has changed since the halcyon days of my youth. The playground equipment, equipment was really dangerous when I was a kid. One of the toys was a towers that you'd climb to ring a bell but they were taller than the school and if you fell from any one of these three towers you know whoever rung the bell first will win but if you fell to the ground that's it you're done they were there for so long I don't know if there's a school there anymore but even when I was growing, I was like, yeah, look at those things. They're taller than the school. You could look down from the bell ringing towers and you could see the roof of the school and all the stuff, the, the toys that were on the roof of the school. And then I came back with my friend and his family in the summer. And we climbed on the roof and got all that stuff. <coughs> <clears throat> and we used the window ledges of the whatever. It was, the night, it was everything. I wonder if kids ever climbed up pole and they're like, oh, what? Somebody took all the stuff. All the stuff that was always up there. Whatever. This is, this is the outtake. <laughs> 